Hello, and welcome to the second video in this series on creating a web-based map application using open source tools. In this video, we'll create the initial code outline for Flask and use MapLibre to display a map on a web page. Uh, so we've got our project over here in PyCharm. Um, and you can use any ID, but this is what, we'll, what I'll be using. Um, we can create an empty Python package um, for our app, and we can creatively Call it app. All right, so we've got our initialization file. Um, and so this is where we're going to put the actual Flask app itself. Um, so we can begin by importing what we need from Flask and creating the actual Flask object. And we'll start with an initial function for creating the app. Um, in the future, this can get expanded as our app grows. Um, right now, it's going to be just a real basic, real basic call. And all it does is return the app object that we create here. Let me just zoom this in so it's more readable. And we can create our very first route. So what happens when people go to the home page for this, for this app? And right now, just as a first pass, all this is going to do is return the word success. That's all we'll see on the web page. Let's get rid of some warnings. All right, and then we actually need to have the app start running when this function, when this um, program is called. There's some arguments that we can put in here, such as the port, um, and we can tell it to run threaded. That's spelled properly. All right, so now that we've got this very bare bones application, we can go ahead and switch to the command line um, and actually start the app. So we can use the Flask command line tool, um, and it tells us what we need to do to actually get it to run, we have to set a few environment variables. So we'll set the Flask app variable just to that app folder. And we might as well let it know that this is a development server. All right, and with Flask run, it's running localhost port 5000. And navigating to that page, we see that we get the success response. Um, so that's great. It's not super exciting. Um, all we've done is establish a route and get some text out. Um, but now we can go ahead and start setting up our actual map. So we're, at, we're going to be rendering an HTML template. So we need to import that capability from Flask. So now, instead of returning this success string, we'll tell it to render a template. Um, now, this hasn't been created yet, but we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, so in this folder, we need to create a templates folder. Um, and inside of here, we're going to need our new HTML file. So this HTML file is still pretty bare bones. Um, and we can show that it has succeeded. So now we're successfully rendering that template instead of just sending back text. Um, so while this is bare bones, it is what we're going to be working from. So heading over to MapLibre, um, if you're not familiar, MapLibre is a spin-off of Mapbox GLJS um, right before 
uh, they changed their um, requirements to use it. So it's open source, um, and they've got a great examples page. So this very first example, super basic. It's really just displaying a map. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and literally just steal their code because um, it does everything we want it to do. And so now if I just save this off, we can go back to our localhost page, reload it, and we get the exact same thing, but taking up the full page. There's a few things I want to call out here. There's an empty div that we've given the ID map. And then there's some information about styling that div. We're, we're telling it to take up the whole page, um, but there's no content in it. But it's important that we gave it this ID and that we remember what the ID is. So down in the JavaScript, when we declare our new map libre GL map, we tell it the container, which is that div. That's the ID. So that's how it knows to put the map there. We point it at the style JSON. They centered it at 0, 0, so lat long 0, 0, or, or in this case, long lat, and then give it an initial starting zoom, which is, of course, zoomed way out. So if we want a slightly different map, because if that one's just a little cartoony, um, we can go look at one of their other examples um, and steal that style JSON. Swap it in right there, go back to our page, reload, and we've got a new base map. So just for context, I want to go back to the diagram that we went over in the last video. At this point, we've pretty much just touched on these two pieces. We've started up the web server, which is running Flask, and we've added a single route, which just points it to a home page. We haven't set up any interaction with the database. We don't have our own tile server. But that web server is sending that HTML, JavaScript, CSS over to the client, which is then interpreting it and displaying a map for us. So we've got these two pieces set up. In the next video, we'll add the tile server by spooling up a PG tile serve instance inside of Docker and connecting it to our Postgres instance. We'll point map libre at it so we can get our custom data on this map. As always, the code will be linked in the description. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.